Friends, I'm Susan Axelrod, your confidence coach. I'm here with my podcast co-host, media mogul Cornelia Stephanie. Welcome to the Women Who Radiate Wealth podcast, where we show up as we are and have fun in business. Our focus is women's entrepreneurship, where we empower female entrepreneurs. We share with you financial and emotional self-confidence in business while making your offer, being intentional and purposeful with what you want to bring to fruition. So then what happens when life throws you curveballs that affect your business? Today, we will discuss the best laid plans and how they go awry when something unexpected happens. Whether it's life, world events, or mother nature disrupting your output, how do you handle it? Cornelia, hello friend, let's talk curveballs. Perfect title, thank you, Susan. I'm so glad that we're talking about it because both of us recently have had that experience in more ways than one. Yes in more ways than one. So it's like, wow. And I know that there's a lot of entrepreneurs and business people that can relate to relate to this. And I think like right now, we can really take a look at where we are in life and that it's not business as usual. It's not business as usual. Women who radiate wealth, Cornelia, are women who really do give themselves permission to show up as you are. And sometimes that means emotionally. <laughs> sometimes that means in less than the perfect type A cast that we have been, you know, for so long. Um, I uh, don't even, I barely know where to start to talk about curveballs, but uh, in our little pre-podcast conversation, I just said this to Cornelia, which I'm very moved to share today during this podcast discussion. I have had curveballs thrown at me for more than a year that I could never have begun to imagine. And today I'm feeling like, when am I gonna get back to my business in the hardcore, ambitious, amazing, fun way that I have been doing it for years? When, when is that gonna happen? Uh, starting in a day or two, I'm gonna be driving back across country. That's a curveball. Then I'm gonna get back and then there's gonna be other things, other curveballs, et cetera. And so what I've come up with is what Cornelia Stephanie, the business leader, and I do best, which is show up as I am and go forward, Cornelia. We're only going forward, we're never going back. So when life throws you a curveball that you need to dodge, isn't it vital to realize and imagine going forward through it yes but it takes a lot of courage and honesty that because you you called it you said i'm having this thing and yes. and you you called it out you said i'm having this thing where i just where basically this thing in your mind let's the ego in the mind that is saying oh. susan when will you get back to your normal ambitious self where you're gonna do all the things get back to it, whatever, get, I would invite them to say, what does get back to it really mean? You know, um, yes. what, what does that really mean? Because you've been getting to it in, in so many different ways, uh, just when, where you've been invited to uh, show up with all the curveballs that you've had to deal with over the last two months, just that alone. Yeah. And with that, you're you're still showing up in your business, but just in a different way. And you're also showing up in your life for the people that are in your family, in your, your clients. And uh, again, it's not business as usual. So you listening to your uh, ego that is saying, when will you get back to the way we used to do things? then like you just said, I'm, we're not. I mean, that that's it. I think we you're really getting to it very quickly. And I hope that our viewers see 
how happy we are with this and our listeners here and everyone feels the energy that when when a curveball is thrown at your business whether you dodge whether you flow whether you navigate however it is we want you to understand the importance of the forward motion through i think that's very very important so um if you uh, have the prescience the like forward the foresight to see where you can be on the other side of the curveball cornelia both of us boy we've really <laughs> we've really been in it recently haven't we but both of us um have this in our partnership together it's great to have support that way but also deep in our soul uh belief that we're going to be better on the other side. Would you say it that way, Cornelia? Would, would you say that that would be an apt way to, to address curveballs? I do, because you know why? Like what happens in the curveball? You mentioned this earlier when you were talking about in the last year. And so looking back at the last year, out of all the curveballs that, that have been, uh, that you've had to go around underneath, up and down, all of the different curveballs, but look at where you are today in your consciousness and in your evolution and where you are today. Things are tender because, you know, for those of the people that know you, know that you've recently lost your mom, and that is a lot of grief. Yeah. That that's a lot of grief. So, you know, from that standpoint, nothing is great. And we're not, we're not saying that at all. But what we are saying is that you are, you are showing up and that you're being authentic to your life and that you're working with what's there and uh, showing up for your family and for your clients in the way that you can. And so, and look at how you've, you've managed to move through all of those curveballs. And when you look into the future, where will you be in six months from now? And where will you be in a year from now? I mean, I just, I keep looking away, like my eyes keep looking away because the energy is palpable right now, Cornelia. It's like, it's palpable. I could feel it. I could see it. I'm experiencing it. Um, and to be able to show up um, it sounds strange and pretty awful, but one night I was in the hospital with my mother. It was late at night and um, a client I know very well, many, many years. Um, I, I can't remember how it ended up, but we ended up on the phone together. And then the person had a question and I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything anyway. Let's get to it. And he's like, but your mom and I'm like, she's over there hanging out. You know, it's just this funny thing of how you can still show up no matter what, even when you're like literally in the curveball place. There's a couple of things I want to call out here, Cornelia. I'm still looking off because the energy is really being shown to me. So there's a couple of things I want to call out. One is how you are leading what you call the new earth. And we call, um, you know, I call it intuitive business, showing up as you are and really being in business in a different way. And that is making time your friend. Cornelia, Stephanie, you have a new app. And, and this is so exciting. And because I had to step back a little bit because of my mother and the situation that we're discussing, I had to like perch myself a little bit. I couldn't be in it with you like the way I would have wanted to be all that juicy, delicious, fun work stuff that, that you have been doing and I would be doing. I had to perch a little bit. And what I want to say uh, that I have uh, observed in, in your business model, your business style, your business truth, your business authenticity from my observation, oh, I'm just getting something really big here, Cornelia, is that um, you've made time your friend that no matter how important this app is to the world and to your business, which includes many others of us in the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group, and then, of course, to you personally, the curveballs you've been thrown kind of, I'm going to use the word forced you, but still it was a choice, gave you the opportunity to like step back and even no matter how important the app was to you to be like, it's going to get done, but it's not going to get done in the old way with the pressure and the stress and the tears and the anxiety and the resentment of other things and this and that. 
it's going to get done in the new way that we work, which is like exactly as it's intended to go, exactly when it's intended. Oh, I have total chills. Do you get me here? I get you. Yes, it's exactly the way. <laughs> it, that is exactly the new way. And that is without it's 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 much more easier than that it's much more fun it's much more creative it's much more in the now it's much more in the now and it's it's collaborative that's the other thing and so there's a learning curve because we have to learn so many new things and there's there's that and you know you just want to when you have a new resource and you have a lot of people involved and you want to offer it up you just want to hurry up and it's like let's have the party you yes. know it's kind of like you want to you want to hurry up and get that done when that's that's not the case uh at all when when we're doing something like this because we're building the app we're building something sustainable that's going to be around in the future that is a resource we, we you know on our previous podcast we were talking about legacy and and so there's that but you mentioned the word time so I want to tell you how I perceive time. So in the old world, in the third dimensional construct reality, you know, we were uh, prisoners to time. We were, time was controlling us and time was ruling us. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. We would say those words, I don't have enough time. Yes. In the new world, in the fifth dimensional consciousness, in the, in the new earth, we now uh, express it from the now moment. The now moment, the now moment, the now moment. And in the now moment, something's going to get prioritized. That's, that's the thing. That's the distinction to make so that you don't say the words, I don't have the time. That's not true because that's not true right it's like no we, we do have time because really truly time is an illusion because truly the only thing we have is we only have now and if we can bring all our energy all our energy you know not being preoccupied by the past not having our energy too too long in the future but bringing everything into the now and then being fully present in the now so that in case we feel, if we felt overwhelmed by life and by what, what's going on, if you fully bring your presence right here, right now, you can get out of overwhelm when you are fully present by focusing your energy, whether that is expressing your love to sitting with your mother at, in, the, in the hospital bed, or whether that is me sitting with a person that I just met in a hospice situation, uh, you know, being fully present there, being, bringing all our energy into the now moment. And then all of a sudden, those things don't even matter because what happens is we're just fully present right here, right now, expressing our love and, you know, leaving that legacy. And if we can remember to bring that energy into everything that we do um, all the time when we're co-creating, when we're living with our families, when we're expressing our love, when we um, are sharing our love with our loved ones, because we, we're talking about, uh, you know, how all of a sudden one day somebody is going to be gone and that we actually um, are proactive in telling each other all the time, the people that you love in your life, um, that you're running after, after them and you can't wait to see them walk in the room and you light up. Mm. So important. Um, it almost feels a little easier to understand when you're in the realm of life and death, as you and I both have been for quite a while to tell you the truth. But let's have a little bit of fun, Cornelia, and share and reveal as we do, um, that it wasn't that long ago that um, the curveball for each of us was more technical. 
um, for you, you went away, but uh, as as we do in our work, we do our work where we are, we live life where we are, we're in our soul journey and soul connection where we are all together. And you went to a place where you thought you were going to have good technology and you ended up not having good technology. For me, I'm in a transitional space. And so I haven't really had my good, I'm just going to call it tech setup, let's call it. And so it's not in the realm of life and death, but boy, these are curveballs too, aren't they, Cornelia? Yeah, I mean, if you don't have the tools to do your job, it can totally drive you nuts. And you know, we're speakers, we're influencers, we're entrepreneurs, we're leaders. Our our job is we want our technology to work. And boy, yes. when technology works, yes. when it works, it's amazing, right? Yes. And when it doesn't work, it's really, really frustrating. And we have to roll with that too. But then on top of it, if, you know, because we're on video. And so we know that the videos that we're creating are going to be around for a long time. We want things to look good. Uh, we're looking good. We're showing up looking good, sounding good you know, delivering quality product to our public, the people that we influence, because it's valuable. It's important to us. It's our business. It's the same way that the store owner opens the store in the morning at nine o'clock or at 10 o'clock and lets the customers in. It's that same thing. It's opening up the doors. Exactly, exactly right. That, that That's exactly right. Um, now I want to bring together the point that you uh, just made about the now moment that in these moments, uh, for me, if I'm going live, which I do every day, part of my organic marketing strategy is I go live every day on Facebook. If I'm going live and I know that I'm not in a place where my live is going to show well, I have a choice that I can make in that moment. I cannot do it. I can do it and not acknowledge it. I can do it and acknowledge it, right? There's choices that we make in the now moment when the curveball is thrown to us. Cornelia made a choice. It feels like it really wasn't that long ago. It feels like forever ago when you had that um, situation where you didn't have your good tack, where you could give over to that and say, perhaps I'm supposed to be in a spiritual space right now. So sometimes when curveballs are thrown at us, it's to, you know, move us a little bit and say, oh, maybe we're not supposed to be in that I guess we might call it the physical business space. Maybe we're supposed to be in the spiritual space. And that is a very, very important thing to understand when curveballs are thrown at you because curveballs, we are human and they are thrown at you all the time. And so think, what you do with that. Yeah. And I think it's so important right now that, that you said that because a lot of people are not able to carry on and do the things business as usual because there's so many curveballs with everything that's going on out there in the world. And I'm, I'm hearing it all the time in all the conversations and even with the most adept people that know how to manage their energy, they're having a hard time. Just speaking to somebody yesterday was saying, I'm just having a hard time with my people having a hard time. Mm. Yeah. I'm having a hard time because my people are having a hard time. So I'm having a hard time, which means she's not able to put out her creative output because her, she's feeling it. So I think we all need to rethink uh, critical thinking and strategy of how we show up in business and actually, honestly, what we can get done in a day. It's not the way we used to do it because there is way too much more that we're doing on an energetic level and on an emotional level where we might have to pick up the phone and be there for a friend, or we might have to stay that extra hour, or we might have to make that trip that we didn't plan for because someone committed suicide, or we might have to, these things, these are all, these are all curveballs. They're, they're all curveballs. And, um, and we, we, maneuver around the curveballs in consciousness. That is the way to handle and manage the curveballs that will be thrown uh, to you and at you in consciousness. Cornelia said earlier in the now moment. When you are in the now moment, when you are in what I call soul connection, when you are in a space of knowing what your purposefulness is that is coming up 
out of you and you show up as you are to do that thing, then you be in this consciousness space of, oh, hold on a second. I could be completely derailed. I could be emotionally, mentally, physically even derailed. Our good friend, that gratitude guy, David Brooks, shared with us that the night, I think the day before a big keynote speech, he was running and he fell. <laughs> Talk about a physical, you know, thing. He fell and he got pretty banged up. You know, he was able to go on and, and do his keynote speech. But when that happens, that has happened to me before. It is, it has happened to me um, that I have, I fell when I was running once. One time I was simply walking across a, a, a parking lot and I literally fell so far, so hard, I cracked my tooth oh my and God. I did not trip on anything. And on that day, in my consciousness, Cornelia, please believe me when I said that was God pushing me down to, because I was not awake. And so to be in this consciousness in a, in a gentler way, I learned from Cornelia this language of um, being tender with yourself. You know, it's a time for that. And so to be tender, you know, for that day, um, David, um, to be tender with himself and pick himself up and, and, you know, love himself a little bit and then in grace be able to give a powerful keynote uh, the next day. There's physical, there's emotional, there's spiritual, there's energetic. All of these um, areas are where we really want to be in consciousness. Because when we look back, when we look back and we see how far we've come in the last two months, in the last four months, in the last six months, and where we're going, how far we've come, and, and, and how much courage it takes to show up the way that we show up, and what it is that we're doing, to not sabotage the self, but to show up in the courageous self, and to make those calls, and to face that thing that needs to be faced. And, and sometimes when we face that thing, we might have to cry, we might have to grieve, and when we do, we need space for that too. And then again, it's not about time. It's about presence. So I invite everyone, I invite our listeners to really look at and perceive time in a new way and make a new relationship with the way that you experience and create your reality from uh, a, a, a place of the power of now, the now moment. And release the way that you used to do time in in that toxic old way to where you're imprisoned by the concept of time i love what we are sharing here i cannot think of anything more truly profound then offering those who are seeing us, hearing us, experiencing this discussion with us, the opportunity to make a choice to reframe, revise, and re-look at how they see and how they experience time. In my own journey, I, I've done this work over years, actually many years from, from my old former type A self. Um, the first book that I published is called Your Job Is To Be. Because at that time, after I had had a breakdown, the psychiatrist I was seeing said to me, you're a human being, not a human doing. And the human doing is connected to time in the old, old way that we're describing here. And the human being is connected to time, the blessing of the breath in this moment, in the new way of being uh, now. Yeah, and that that's that's so true. We are human beings, not human doings, and I I love that so much. You know, the the way that I deal with appointments when it comes to time, this that would be the opportunity to look at the calendar and say, I have to show up for this appointment at this time. That's an appropriate use of uh, using the calendar and time, or I have to get on the airplane or I have to show up in church or I have to do this at this time. Right. So that would be a good time to, to say, yeah, that that's a good time to use the, the, that language. But when you are as an entrepreneur, when you're in your 
uh, zone of genius or you're talking to your clients or you're working with people work from a place you know when you when you're in your creativity you know what happens when you can just completely let go and not even realize that you're in time and you're in totally a creative space where just magic happens there if you can go into that space more often than not that would be really a wonderful place for you to live your true authentic self uh, instead of being you know imprisoned by the walls of time I love that this distinction that you're making. We live in the physical world uh, so far still, Cornelia. I mean, come on, you have to be honest and say, you know, you and I scheduled, committed and decided that we would do some podcast recordings today. I mean, I had it on my calendar. I, I did want to respectfully show up on the time that we designated, right? That That's true. We have meetings. I have my client sessions. You know, I, I nearly never miss a client session. So I like, I like what you're bringing out. Come on, Susan and Cornelia, be realistic. You know, time is something that you have to pay attention to. But the idea that you just shared with us, it's called being in flow, that time that you are in your creative genius zone where time just passes and you don't, you don't even know it. Um, but I want to bring to uh, the surface even more the idea of consciousness. So Cornelia shared with me that I, of course, I don't even ask you, have to ask your permission because we reveal um, there was a time that there was a hard week. And you just didn't honestly feel that you could actually show up to a couple of uh, client meetings in full energy, but that rather you felt depleted from curveballs. And so you made a choice in consciousness to not show up for those clients with depleted energy in the old way. Oh, I got to show up anyway. I have to show up. I have to show up, right? Being a prisoner to that time block but instead to share and communicate, you know, I'm not at my best today and I need to reschedule. So this is like um, perhaps maybe a, a connecting point, a crossing over of the physical and the consciousness that we're talking about. Does that feel like, does that feel right, Cornelia? Yeah, totally. I mean, that's exactly, you know, that would be another opportunity for you to really honor yourself. Like I couldn't have even conceived that day to, show up to these calls and I would be totally unauthentic showing up. I mean, I was that out of it, uh, that exhausted to where I needed to rebalance myself from everything that I had just been through. And I needed to recharge my batteries and give myself permission to do it because I know when I do come, I'm going to come full on. It's going to be full energy. It's going to be balanced. The energy that, that you're going to walk into with me, you're going to feel uplifted. It's important to me. And that I have that consciousness that also is going to be, you know, the strategy that I can support the people that I'm having meetings with to, you know, uh, you know, increase their, their value in their business and whatnot. So uh, making those calls and saying, hey, I, I won't be able to keep our appointment today. Can we reschedule for next week? And that's it. And then, you know, you get you get the replies by saying, I hope everything is OK. And yes, can we meet next week? And then that's it. And then, you know, in the middle of the day, you go lay down for like three hours and take a deep, deep, long nap. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. This brings up uh, something that's related that I actually have a video on this on my YouTube channel, which is The Confidence Zone with uh, Susan Axelrod. And it's a video, just a brief video that I did that talks about um, be aware and be careful of whom you do business with. With whom are you doing business? Are they people you trust first and foremost, of course, but are they the type of people who simply say back to you, Oh my gosh, is everything okay, Cornelia? Of course we'll reschedule to next week as opposed to my time is, you know, whatever, right? These are the people we choose to do business with. This is the new order of business. This is the new earth way of being. And this is also who we are in the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group because I know two of those people were inside the group. Yes, wonderful. Susan, how can people find you? How can entrepreneurs find you to work with you? Thank you so much. My website is whatwillyourlegacybe.com.
That is the same name of my Facebook page. What will your legacy be? I hang out there on Facebook every day, live at 5 p.m. Eastern, or I can be reached through my website, whatwillyourlegacybe.com. I'd love to hear from anyone who has feedback or thoughts on this very special topic. If you don't have a podcast, you should get one and you should contact me. You can reach me at radio at corneliastephanie.com or instant message me on Facebook. And as always, it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you here today. It's always so great to be with you, Susan. I love you so much. I love what, what it is that we're doing. And thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And we'll see you all again next time. See you soon. Take good care. Bye.